Responding to a late night call is part of the job. You never know what to expect, but this call was different. Unit 42, we have a 10, 31 at 7 Harpers Mill Road. Possible break-in. Neighbors report strange noises and lights. Please respond. Harpers Mill Road. It sent a chill down my spine. That old worn down mansion at the end of the street had a reputation. People said it was haunted, but I didn't believe in such things. Still, the thought of going there alone at night made my skin crawl. The streets were empty as I drove. The only sounds, the hum of my cruiser and the occasional distant bark of a dog. The sky was dark and the air was super humid, a sign that rain was coming. The mansion stood tall at the end of the street, its silhouette dark against the night sky. I parked the car and stepped out, my breath visible in the cold night. The place reeked of rot and neglect, like an old tomb. I radioed in my location, then approached the house with my flashlight out. The front door was open, creaking softly in the wind. I called out, police, anyone here? But received no answer. The air inside was stale and musty, carrying the scent of mildew. I gripped my flashlight tighter and stepped inside. The floor creaked under my weight, each step echoing through the empty halls. The house was a maze of shadows and forgotten memories. There were huge cobwebs, and the walls were covered in peeling wallpaper. I moved slowly, checking each room. They were all empty, no sign of life. But as I reached the back of the house, I heard it, a faint tapping. My heart pounded in my chest as I followed the sound down a narrow hallway the smell of rot growing stronger with each step. The tapping led me to a door at the end of the hall. It was slightly open and the smell of decay was almost unbearable here. I pushed the door open with the toe of my boot and shined my flashlight inside. The room was empty, save for an old cracked mirror on the wall and a worn out armchair in the corner. Then I saw it. A figure reflected in the mirror, standing right behind me. I spun around, my flashlight beam cutting through the darkness, but there was nothing there, just an empty hallway. My pulse raced, and I could feel the sweat on my forehead despite the cold. Who's there? I called out, my voice echoing through the empty house. The only response was the steady drip of water from a leaky pipe somewhere in the distance. I turned back to the mirror, my flashlight beam illuminating its surface. The figure was gone. But the tapping continued, louder now, more insistent. It was coming from below. Taking a deep breath, I steeled myself and headed for the basement door. The stairs creaked as I descended, the air growing colder and damper with each step. The smell of decay was almost suffocating now, mingling with the earthy scent of mold. The tapping was louder, echoing off the stone walls of the basement. I reached the bottom and swept my flashlight around the room. There, in the center of the floor, was a trap door. The tapping was coming from underneath it. I approached cautiously, the hairs on the back of my neck standing on end. My hand trembled as I reached for the handle, the metallic scent of blood mixing with the overpowering stench of decay. I yanked the trap door open and the tapping stopped. The darkness below was impenetrable my flashlight unable to reveal what lay beneath. I felt a chill run down my spine as I peered into the abyss, the smell of rotten death almost making me gag. Then, out of the darkness, a hand reached up and grabbed my ankle. I screamed, stumbling back and dropping my flashlight. It rolled across the floor, casting wild shadows as it went. I tried to kick free, but the grip was like iron, cold and unyielding. Help me! A voice rasped from below, weak and desperate. Please, help me. I managed to wrench my foot free and grab the flashlight, shining it into the hole. The beam revealed a haggard, emaciated face staring up at me, eyes wide with terror. The smell of decay was overpowering, and I realized with horror that it was coming from him. What happened to you? I asked, my voice shaking. He coughed a wet, rattling sound that sent shivers down my spine. Trapped for so long, it won't let me go. I reached down, my hand trembling and tried to pull him up, but as soon as I touched him, a wave of cold washed over me. 
and I felt something else, something malevolent. The air grew thick with the scent of sulfur and rot, and a deep guttural growl echoed from the darkness below. I pulled back, my heart racing. I need to call for backup, I said, backing away from the trapdoor. Just hold on. But before I could turn, the trapdoor slammed shut with a deafening crash. The growling grew louder, more insistent, and the basement lights flickered and went out. I was plunged into darkness. I fumbled for my flashlight, the beam cutting through the pitch black. The trap door was closed, but the growling continued, echoing off the walls. I backed towards the stairs, my mind racing. I had to get out of here, had to get help. Just as I reached the stairs, something grabbed me from behind, cold fingers digging into my shoulder. I screamed, spinning around, but there was nothing there. The growling stopped, replaced by a low, mocking laughter that echoed through the basement. I bolted up the stairs, not stopping until I was outside, gulping in the fresh night air. The smell of decay lingered, but the oppressive weight of the basement was gone. I radioed for backup, my hands shaking, and waited in the cruiser, never taking my eyes off the house. When the backup arrived, we searched the basement, but there was no sign of the man or the trap door. The house was silent, the air still thick with the scent of rot and decay. We left, locking the place up and marking it as a hazard. To this day, I can't explain what happened that night. The smell of decay and the sound of that growling haunt my dreams, a constant reminder of the horrors that can lurk in the shadows. And I know deep down that the house at 7 Harper's Mill Road still holds its dark secrets, waiting for the next unfortunate soul to uncover them.